In this video, I just want to introduce a piece of notation which we've kind of already seen, uh, but which turns out to be extremely useful for describing, say, large matrices. So we saw in the last video that if I have a matrix A, I can write the entries rather than sort of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and eventually running out of letters in the alphabet. Uh, I could just write A11 for the top left entry and then working along the row A12, A13 until I get to the end of the row which is going to be A1N because there are N columns and then go down to the second row and have A21, A22 etc all the way up to A2N and eventually I get down to the bottom row which is the M row and I have AM1 all the way along to a m n so these numbers these subscripts are called indices which is the plural of index and you can actually treat them as variables so you can call you know the general uh, entry of this matrix a i j and then you can substitute in values for i and j so why would we want to do this? Well, here's a really nice compact formula for matrix multiplication. Let's suppose I have matrices A and B. A is M by N and B is N by P. Um, rather than writing out a massive matrix for the answer, I can just tell you a formula for the ijth entry of this matrix, which I'm going to denote by putting a bracket around the matrices and, and putting an ij there. I didn't need to put a bracket here because there was just one letter, but now you know there's two letters, so I need to say the ij is applying to the product of those two. So what is it? Well, if I want to get the ijth entry of ab, I need to take the ith row of A, whose entries are then A i1, A i2, up to A i n. And I need to multiply that into the jth column of B, whose entries are going to be B 1 j, B 2 j, all the way down to B N J. So if that's not immediately obvious to you, pause and think about why I'm putting the end you know the indices I one, I two, it's because it's the ith and ith uh, row and why I'm putting the J in the second entry of the Bs. Okay, so um so the formula is going to be a i1 times b1j plus a i2 times b2j. Let me just move this uh, down here a bit, get it out of the way. Plus dot 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 a i n and then B and J. Better still, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as a sum, right? It is a sum of terms. And what are the terms? Well, they're all of the form A, I, something, I'm going to call the something K, times B, something J. Right, A I one B one J A I two B two J. So here K is one, here K is two, up here K is N. So the sum here is going from K equals one to K equals N. So this is a really nice compact formula for matrix multiplication, which uses this uh, index notation. 
For example, we can use this to prove um, facts like the fact that matrix multiplication is associative, which means that A times B times C is the same as A times B times C. All you would do is you take the ijth entry on both sides, write out the formula and see that they're the same. Let's just check. Write the ijth entry of, um, of this whole block is sum. Let's, let's do the, um, the outer matrix product first. So it's sum of a, b, uh, i, k, c, k, j using our formula and then we can expand this uh, I should say this sum is over k I'm not going to tell you what k goes from and to because it's too much information uh, so now we get another sum it's the sum over k's of the sum over let's say l another variable of a i l b l k c k j okay that's just now expanding the definition a b i k using this formula here you'll note that i'm very freely changing letters right so you know here i've got i k so i need to substitute i and k instead of i and j in this formula and now i'm not allowed to call this uh, this index that I introduce k anymore because I've already used the symbol k so I in introduce a new one called l so these these guys are called dummy indices it's called a dummy index because it doesn't really matter what it's called you could call it whatever you want uh, whereas the i and j are determined by which entry you're picking um, okay, so that's the left-hand side. Let's see on the right-hand side if we compute the ijth entry of A, B, C. What do we get? Well, we're going to get sum A, I, K, B, C, K, J. This is sum over K. And now we expand this guy, B, C, and we get sum over K. Um, a i k sum uh, over l b k l c l j again I've introduced a new dummy index l to sum over this expression here we can take the a i k inside the sum just by sort of distributivity of multiplication in other words multiplying out brackets and we get sum over k, sum over l, a, i, k, b, k, l, c, l, j. That looks very similar to what's over here, with one exception, which is that the l's and the k's appear in, in the opposite, opposite way. But that doesn't matter because here k is a dummy index, so I should say dummy index, and L is also a dummy index, so we can just rename them. So in particular, I'm going to rename L as K and K as L. So just renaming. We get sum over L, sum over K, A, I, L, B, L, K, C, uh, K, J. And now all we have to do is switch the order of summation, which we can do. It's just a finite sum. There's no nothing to worry about there. And we get exactly the other side. So you see, this is quite a powerful piece of notation. Um, it gets used literally everywhere. If you open a physics textbook on general relativity, you will see index notation in extremists it's like they have not just sort of matrices but they have things with like four indices called tensors and like all, all sorts of numbers of indices and some of the indices are up and some of them are down it's it's fantastic it's you should you should check it out 
Okay, in the next video, we're going to introduce some more matrix operations like addition and exponentiation.